book of uh, John, John 1, 17. Okay, I just, I just want to start again with this verse. It says here, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So when we preach the gospel of grace, in the context of doctrine, all we need, all we gain is cerebral knowledge. But when we preach grace in the context of who He is, because grace is a person, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, we are going to receive revelation. Okay? So, hindi po knowledge lang na nalagdagdagan, kundi revelation po sa ating Panginoon ang nakikita natin at kung anong ginagawa niya sa buhay natin at kung anong pwede gawin ng biyaya sa bawat buhay po natin. That's the reason why truth is always on the side of grace. Because the truth will set you free. Amen. And Christian life is grace all the way. From the moment that God created Adam and Eve, you know, what happened then after they fell into sin, God pursued them. And then, the concurrent event after that, makita natin kung anong ginawa ng ating Panginoon until such a time, no, He sent His begotten Son in John 16 to reveal who is our Heavenly Father, that God loves us so much, and that Jesus came to save us. And not only that, Jesus Christ, what He has done on the cross, and we are believers in the house, and once we are a believer in the house, we will believe what He has done on the cross. Can you say Amen? And then in Romans 5.17, Romans 5.17, Hallelujah. For if by the one man's offense that reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace. The reason why you can reign in this life is once you receive these two gifts, the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. Because abundance of grace is grace Grace is a person, and we can always come to the throne of His grace. That po sinabi natin grace, heavenly, our Heavenly Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, they are a dynamic duo of graciousness. Amen. So every time we have these needs in life, that's like what we have sung earlier. All I need is Jesus. I like that song. Thank you, Brother Fernand, for that. Amen. So it's such, an, it's such help and anointing that... We don't need to talk to one another. Amen. To 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 what songs na nakilala na natin. But because of this um, a grace thing, na natikita ko natin, there's always a synchronization. So this is my heart. Amen. This is my heart. I want each and every one of us to reign in this life, just like what the Bible has said. Those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, two things that we can reign in this life. To the one Jesus Christ. And if you have Jesus Christ, all you have to do is to receive all the abundance of His grace and of the gift of righteousness. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Hallelujah. So, so Jesus Christ came and He walked in this earth and now He is reigning with the Father in heaven. We know that. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Pouring out His grace upon us. To overcome, say overcome. overcome, to overcome every challenges that we face in this life. Amen. Who among you here have many challenges? Alright? He's not leaving us, for He said in His word that He will never leave us nor forsake us. And He is empowering us to live this life through Him. We cannot live our life through our own effort. Amen. We can live in this life through Him. That's why we can reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Through His finished work on the cross. So the title of my message here is The Overflow of Grace Encounter. Amen. Because in John 10.10, 10, in Amplified Version, Jesus said, I came that they may have life. Amen. Now you are in Jesus, you have now your life in Jesus. I came that you may have life and enjoy life. Habang ikaw ay nabibigkot sa Panginoon, habang tayo nagkikinig sa salita ng Diyos, habang gumagawa po tayo ng mga negosyo po natin, o meron kang ministry, meron kang career, meron kang trabaho, kung ikaw ay sudyante, God wants you to enjoy your life in Him. Not in the world. Amen? And have it in abundance. And have it in abundance. That's why there's abundance of grace. Amen? And have it in abundance to the full. 
Till it overflows. Amen? Till it overflows. So, gusto ng ating Panginoon na mag-overflow tayo. Amen? The overflowing life that we have from our Lord Jesus Christ. Because when we receive Him, when we receive His fullness, His grace, your life now is created to overflow with His goodness. Your life now is created to overflow with His grace. Amen. So, ang buhay po natin, gagamitin po ni Lord mightily, and we will become testimony of His goodness. Can you say amen? amen? Now, in the Bible, a lot of stories na makikita po natin that will represent each and every one of us. Those stories in the Bible are not just there para lang po makita natin for the sake of having a Bible. But for us to understand and we want to squeeze it, we want to know what is inside of those stories so that you and I makita natin nasa na ba ako ngayon. And, and those stories will represent us. Okay. And uh, I want... To start with the case one, I, 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 I put here case one because of the natin, di ba, di ba mga cases sa Dubai? Okay? But these are stories and the first thing that gusto po natin balitan and gusto natin makuha yung mas wish natin ito is in the story of John chapter 4, story po ni Samaritan woman. Amen. So, there are these cases na kung saan nakarana sila ng grace encounter and after they encountered Jesus Christ, they overflow. Amen? So, sino po dito ang gusto mag-overflow? Amen. <laughs> and I want to overflow also because uh, we, maaga po kami umalis kahapon, 4 o'clock in the morning and umuwi po kami ng bahay na uh, I think mga 11 or 12. So, so far, pagod po yung katawan and, and I really pray, I'm really praying to God that God will give me the strength to, to deliver uh, the message and God is putting this into my heart because alam ko po ang biyaya po ay lalim may bunga. Amen. At kapag may bunga ang biyaya, it will confirm to you and to other people. It will, it will be a testimony to this church. It will be a testimony sa mundong ito that God is really, really good in our life. Amen. So in John chapter 4, magkikita po natin dito, we find a story about a Samaritan woman. And looking at the story of Samaritan woman, kung titignan po natin dito, one thing you must understand about Samaritans and Jews, alam natin yun, during this, this time, is that Jews did not associate with Samaritans. Hindi po sila nagkikipag-associate sa mga Samaritans. Amen? And they will not even travel to Samaria. Okay? So magkita po natin dito, if they needed to go to somewhere, and they have to pass through Samaria, they would rather go a long way and all along to the Sea of Galilee. So yun po yung gusto mangyari po ng mga disciples po ni Jesus because they are about to, to go to Galilee and, and sabi nila, imbis na short cut tayo, mag long cut tayo kasi ayaw natin magkipag-associate sa mga Samaritan women. Okay? So makita po natin dito because they consider Samaritans unclean. Okay? And in this particular story, Jesus is with His disciples and but Jesus here, the grace person Himself, needed to go from Judea to Galilee. At makita natin dito, going to Galilee, kahit na meron po siyang pupuntahan po doon, he needed to go to Samaria to meet this Samaritan woman. Gusto niyong katagpuhin po ang Samaritan woman na ito. Amen. He needed to go to Samaria. Jesus needed to go to Samaria because grace was about to happen to a woman at the well. Na makita natin dito, ano bang background nitong Samaritan woman? Okay? He needed to go because he wanted grace to happen to someone's life. Gusto ng ating Panginoong Yesus, mangyari po yung biyaya na makagawa dito sa Samaritan woman na ito. Sa pagkat ng Samaritan woman na ito, okay, ay, ay, ayaw po niya makihagbilo, sa pagkat siya po ay unclean, at nagita natin ang kanyang, ang kanyang story, meron po siyang, mga, meron po siyang limang asawa, and, and he, she is ashamed of herself. Amen? So magita natin dito, ah, uh, Jesus had to go. No? Kailangan niya pumunta doon. At nakita natin, ito sa Martin woman na ito, he's about to the, uh, go to the well, at doon po, pumunta si Jesus sitting at the well, and the Bible says it's about the sixth hour. The Bible times, this is about the noon time. Twelve o'clock po ng tanghalian. Doon po pumunta si Jesus. No? At ito po, sinasakto po ng Samaritan woman na walang ibang tao po doon na nandoon except siya lang po. Pero nagkataon, nandun po si Jesus, naghihintay sa kanya. Amen. So nakita natin dito, 
Lagi sa biyaya ng Panginoon, si Jesus po ang naghihintay. Amen. Amen. Ano man ang nakaraan mo, maybe you are ashamed of your past. Any cases of your life, just like the Samaritan woman, if we have to squeeze the story, makita natin dito, may gustong gawin ng Panginoon sa buhay po nitong Samaritan woman na ito. Amen. At nakita natin dito, no, uh, hindi man niya kinailangan yung mga disciples niya na nakausapin itong Samaritan woman because these disciples were off to this Samaritan woman. Kaya na pumunta pa ho ang mga disciples sa ibang lugar just to get food for Jesus. Pero sabi doon, ang food ni Jesus to be, for Jesus to be refreshed. Amen? Ang, ang kailangan niyang gawin, bibigay niya sa woman at mag-refresh na siya. Every time Jesus is about uh, to do something with you, siya po ay nare-refresh. Amen? Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, Samaritan woman is ashamed of everything what she has done in the past. Nahihiya po siya sa lahat ng mga nagawa niya in the past. She has no idea what, what she has about to encounter at the well. To encounter Jesus. Amen? So, magita po natin dito. Nag-meet po sila. And Jesus here, He is about to restore the woman's greatest need. He is beginning to restore her as a person. Gusto niya restore siya niya as a person. As someone who is unaccepted even by the Jews. Okay, kaya nga, the Bible says in Ephesians 1.6, You are accepted in the beloved. Amen? So, magita natin dito, okay, walang pinipili po ang Panginoon natin. Amen? So, when makita po natin dito, they have this conversation about water. Bagaman siya po ay kukuha, i-give ng tubig, pero si Jesus mismo, ang sabi niya, can you give me a water? Amen? So, magita natin dito, uh, why, why are you uh, asking me to give you a water? Because Jesus here, kung gusto niyang gawin, mag-step out lang ang Samaritan woman na ito, at ipagkita niya na ako ang kailangan mo, the living water. Amen? So Jesus says, I don't, I don't just have water, I have a living, living water that can spring up from the inside of you. The grace of God is from the inside out. Out of it, it will flow a river. You never have to drink water again, and it will satisfy you for your entire life. When we have Jesus, ma-encuentro mong Panginoon. It will satisfy you, satisfy you the entire life na meron ka dito sa mundong ito. Amen. Say, amen. So, makita po natin dito sa pagamat may nakaraan sa case po ng Samaritan woman, meron po siya nakaraan. And it will not hold place happening from happening. Hindi pipigilan Because grace is not intimidated of your past. Lagi po ito sinasabi, ano man ang nakaraan mo, lumapit ka sa Panginoon, at hindi yan ma-intimidate, yan ang kapin ka niya, i-restore ka niya. Amen. Amen. You get, your past cannot hold Jesus back in delivering you from whatever circumstances you have in your life. Iba yung ginawit natin kanina. Jesus can save, He delivers, He restores. Amen. So your past, sabi mo nga, my past, my past, cannot hold Jesus back, cannot hold Jesus back, in delivering me, in delivering me. Amen. So any situations na meron po tayo, grace is not intimidated by what you have done at the past. Because sin was already dealt at the cross 2,000 years ago. Amen. So grace is going somewhere to happen and it does not depend on you. It is only dependent on your ability to receive what grace is pouring out. So when you receive the grace of God, okay, when the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, we receive Him, you will begin to overflow. So the after effect of grace, the overflow of the woman. So what happened to the woman? Okay, magita po natin dito in verse 27. Praise God. Can you go to the easy worship? Okay. At this point, His disciples came and they marveled. Nagmama, na-amaze sila. Why, why? They marveled. They are questioning their mind. Why Jesus is talking to this woman? Okay? And that He talked with a woman. Yet no one said, What do you see? Or why are you talking with her? What? Why are you talking with her? Verse 28. The woman then left her water pot. Okay? He encountered Jesus. He left the water pot. 
went her way into the city went her way into the city na dati ayaw na makihalubilo because of, he is ashamed of his past of her past but here matita natin lang dito he went all the way to the city and said to the man verse 29 come <laughs> see man who told me all things that I ever did could be the Christ could this be the Christ so listen to this uh, hindi man sinabi ng woman kung ano ang kanyang, kanyang past kay Jesus but here Jesus alam niya kung ano niya tama po ba? okay now makita natin dito what happened to this Samaritan woman after he encamp- after she encountered Jesus this uh, grace encounter makita natin dito nag overflow po siya naging evangelist po siya he shared Jesus amen at makita natin dito um Grace, grace happened to the Samaritan woman, and and so verse twenty seven. Natita natin ngayon na disciples are asking Jesus, ano ginawa mo sa kanya? Meron ka ba sinabi sa kanya? How come nagmamadali siya? Iniwanan niya kanya ng water pot, at ngayon she, she's beginning to to share Jesus. She's beginning to overflow. With his, uh, with, with her encounter with Jesus, sinabi mo ba sa kanya na paano niya isishare ang encounter ng grace niya sa'yo? Bakit iniwan niya ang kanyang pag-ihid na tubig or water jar at tumakbo at ipinagsabi niya ang pag-untul sa'yo? Amen. Alam mo po ba, uh, when Jesus is dealing with you, things not worry what, what is going up, uh, anong mangyayari sa pagkatapos? Amen. Kapag na-encrypto mo ang Panginoon, okay, confident na siya. Jesus is not worried what the woman will do next. Because when you have an encounter with grace, when grace happens to you, you don't need to teach somebody how to respond to grace. You don't need to teach somebody paano siya mag-respond sa grace. They know how to respond to grace. They know how to respond. When you encounter Jesus, His goodness, you will begin to respond. Ikukwento mo yan sa ibang tao. Amen. Amen. Ipagsasabi mo kung gaano siya kabuti. Amen. Amen. Ipag, ipagsasabi mo, meron kang, meron kang istorya, meron kang grace story, sapagat meron kang ginawa ang Panginoon sa'yo. Amen. Amen. When this happens to you, all you are doing, you are so overwhelmed by God's goodness. Amen. You are so overwhelmed by what He has done for you. Yes. Amen. You just begin to pour out with everyone else. And you keep on telling stories. Wow, si Jesus ang nagbigay sa akin ng kagalingan. Yes. Wow, si Jesus siya yung nagpo-provide sa akin. Amen. If Jesus needs to make an evangelist, He doesn't need someone to go to school to try to learn how to talk to people about Jesus. He just needs you and I to have an encounter with Him. Amen. Ang kailangan ng Jesus may encounter natin siya. Because when we have an encounter with Him, we can help but just to share what He has done in our lives. Amen. So makita natin, in spite of his past, gumawa ang biyayan ng Diyos at nag-overflow po siya. Amen. I hope you can relate with this. Amen. Because when you encounter the ways of God, it will flows out from you. Amen. He knows if He can give you a well of living water, Amen, then He can use you in whatever area He has called you to do. Gagamitin pa ng Panginoon. Amen po ba? Amen. Now, another case. Case 2. Okay? Zaghey is the tax collector. He is representing those people. Amen? Actually, the Samaritan woman is unbeliever. Zaghey is here is unbeliever. But when they encounter Jesus, they receive Him as their Lord and Savior. Makita natin, that's, that's, their, that's their story be, uh, began uh, with the grace story. Amen? So, alam natin, Zaghey was a chief tax collector. Makita natin yan sa Luke 90. He was collecting taxes for Rome at that time. Amen. He was a Jew, Chapuhujo, but he was collecting taxes for Rome so that the people at this time they would consider Zacchaeus as a, as a traitor. Okay, pag nanirin po siya ng mga tax po, eh sobra sobra, amen, nadaya po siya. They will not accept him as a Jew. As a Jew. They do not accept him as one of their own. And, and therefore, he is an outcast. Not only he is short, but he is an outcast. Maliit po si Zacchaeus, amen. Pero nung dumating po si Jesus, okay, 
in Luke 19 verse 3. Makita natin now, behold there was a name and he sought to see who Jesus was. He sought to see who Jesus was. Tignan mo nga kung sino si Jesus. A chief tax collector na madaya gusto niya ma-imprento si Jesus. But could not because of the crowd. Kasi maliit siya. Short siya eh. Sabi mo nga short. Kaya tayo naghahanap tayo ng uh, tall, dark, and handsome. Before, I have a girlfriend. Ang short, short niya. <laughs> Pero binigyan naman ni Lord. Yes. Na hindi lang short. Long-legged. Long hair. Amen? Because I come to the place. <laughs> and he's a great scripture. He's a great scripture. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for my wife. Amen. We are in tandem every time we do the ministry, every time we do business. Tandem kami niya. Amen. So going back to Zacchaeus, who is a short man. Okay. Umakit po siya sa sycamore tree. Makita natin dito, na gusto niya makita si Jesus. So si Jesus ngayon, kapag hindi siya ay sinisig mo. Amen. Alam niya kung sinisig mo siya. Sa dinami dami ng crowd, ito sa Zacchaeus, napakaliit. Na gusto niya makita who he was. She, he ran ahead and climbed up. Amen? For Jesus here was going to pass that way. Amen? Kasi ngayon, pinipirsa si Jesus, eh, baliwala pa ang ibang tao eh. Amen? So, and remember, every time we push Jesus, all this good news, we need good news in life. Amen? Okay, so here, when the guys came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today, I must stay at your house. I must stay at your house. Zacchaeus here, okay, makita natin, he is about to encounter Jesus. Amen. So, let me tell you something. When you seek to know who Jesus is, if you seek to know Jesus that He is your provider, you want to seek Jesus as your healer, the grace will gonna tell you, I must. Amen? Because we are looking for that particular grace. I must show in your life. Because when you base that what you are believing in the Word of God, on what, on what He says, His finished work at the cross, grace answer, I must happen. I must happen. So, Zacchaeus here, Makita natin dito, together with Jesus, nag-meet sila sa bahay. And, hindi natin alam kung anong pinag-usapan nila doon. We don't know exactly what they talk about during that day. Because for today, as sabi natin Jesus, I must stay at your house. But, one thing that I want to share it with you, Jesus never talked to Zacchaeus what he needed to do. He just reminded Zacchaeus of who he, he was. He reminded him who he could become if he just trust Jesus. He reminded him who Jesus is as a Messiah, the one who could fill him the same with the woman at the well. The well. So makita natin dito, iba ang case ng Samaritan woman, iba ang case ngayon ni Zacchaeus. So what happened? Zacchaeus responds in verse 8. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Jesus here, who cheated people, after he encountered Jesus, after he encountered grace himself, Look what he, what look what his response is. Sabi niya, look Lord, I give half of my goods. Amen. He received the grace of God. Ngayon, na inkwento niya. Ina mahalaga ito mga pelang pelang ito. Amen. <laughs> Pagita natin dito, gumawa ng biyaya sa kanya. Jesus never had to tell him how he should respond. Hindi niya tinuruan paano siya mag-respond. He just gave his grace to a rich man who cheated people. And now, Zacchaeus here is ready to pay back for fault. Imagine mo yun, kung siya po ay nag-cheat, 
sa bawat chichit po niya, ibabalik po niya ng apat na beses. Did you see the the overflow? You know what? If you teach people to do that, they will never do that. Right? Yes. Oh, sa bawat dinaya mo, balik mo apat na beses, gagawin mo po ba yan? Pero nagawa po yan ni Zacchaeus. Yung imposible, nagawa niya dahil na ikwento niya ang biyaya ni Lord. Ano yung sabihin nito? Amen. Sino ang tao may padahal sa Panginoon? Ano man ang kanya nakaraan, yan man ay nagdaya, yan man ay merong mga ginagawang mga hindi tama. Pag may ikwento nila ang Panginoon, magbabago sila. Amen. <laughs> magbabago sila. Hindi mo man kailangan tuluhan kung paano ang gagawin nila, pero ways will work. Amen? When you encounter ways, you realize all your needs are already provided. Kaya nga sabi ko nga lagi, how can we say that you are truly uh, financially free? Because in the world, ang sipatan ng financial freedom, marami kang pananalapi. Marami kang mga properties. Marami kang mga resources. Walang problema yan eh. Kaya nga si God, wala nang problema kung ikaw ay nangyay negosyo. Ang punto lang dito, huwag mong tignan sa sarili mo kung hindi ka pa financially free kung wala ka pang manifestation na hawak mo. Sa pagkatang gusto makita sa'yo ng Panginoon, malaya ka ngayon pa lang, ma'am, sa aspeto ng pananalapi. Ano pagiging malaya? You are not in bondage. Hindi mo nakikita na mayroong kulang sa'yo. Nagre-respond ka. When the Holy Spirit is telling you to give, you have to give. You are not in bondage anymore. It was for a price that we have been set for free. Pati sa aspeto ng pananalapi. Amen. Kaya ito binibigyan na example. Pagamat yan po ay galing sa mga Uh, connection niya. Pero makita natin dito, ang response sa atin ng biyaya, tutulong kanya maging giver. I mean, tutulong kanya na hindi na mahalaga sa iyo ang pananatay. Bakit? Dahil alam mo, ang grace sa iyo ay sapat ang lawa-lawa. Amen. At everyday, bukas mga lawa, wala naman ngayon, bukas meron. At yung mga hapon, titiyahin ng Panginoon, kakain ka. Amen po ba? Amen. Titiyahin na. Wala pa nagugutom sa atin. Lahat tayo dito may cellphone pa rin. Amen. Lahat dito may panlog pa rin. Amen. Lahat tayo mayroon pa rin tayong damin. Amen po ba? Nakakapamasahe pa rin tayo. Wala pa nagdalakad sa atin. Sapat ang biyay ng Diyos everyday ng buhay natin. Amen po ba? You don't have to be afraid of your future. Because when you are in Jesus, you have a bright future. Amen. It's already put in Jesus Christ. Amen. So don't trust your own thing. Trust Jesus. Amen? Because a Christian walk, it cannot be achieved. It must be received. We do not trust in our achievements to get us to the point where grace is going to pour out on us. Yes. We must just be the receivers. Because as we receive, then we will live out with our response to what is pouring out. So just like Zacchaeus, tinanggap niya si Jesus, ngayon, anong overflow ng buhay niya? He decided to give half of these goods to the poor. I like that, amen? There will come a time, each and every one of us, okay, magkakaroon tayo ng outreach, magkakaroon tayo ng supplementary feeding, amen, and our life will be an overflow. Do you like that? Amen. Praise God, amen? Now, we are receiving more from Him. Allow the Word of God to fill you till it overflow. Amen. We must just be our receivers. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So, in case number three. Okay. So, the Samaritan woman, the chaos, both unbeliever, they got saved and they respond. They overflow. Now, how about in the case of a believer already? The fisherman. Amen. How about people in the house already? It's not enough that you receive Jesus Christ the moment you confess that He is Lord and your Savior. He wants you to experience Him every day of your life. 
Even the time that sometimes we, as workers, as ministers, minsan nakakapagkumi tayo sa Panginoon. Peter here represents us. Amen? Okay, in John 21, nakita natin dito, alam natin si Peter, kung babalikan po natin, he is one of the closest people to Jesus. Amen? Siya po ang pinaka-close. No, one, one of the close, of course, another disciple is John. And Jesus here calls Peter out of the boat to be a fisher of men. So, tinawag siya, be the fisher of men. And now, Peter, okay, ang kita natin dito, God has called him to do things para sa ministry. And like many of us, tinawag tayo ng Diyos in areas in the things and He puts a desire in our hearts. So, one thing na ang gusto kong ipakita sa inyo, kapag mayroong desire sa inyo ang Panginoon, o mayroong dinanagay dito, gawin mo na yan. Hindi mawawala yan. And that is a confirmation that the Holy Spirit is leading you to do something. Okay? So, if Pastor Jericho is always getting video, and that desire is in his heart, that video will be utilized for God's glory. Amen. Thank you for that, Pastor Jericho. Amen? Thank you. So, paki-edit mo lang yung isa yung chat ko. Pwede ba ang gawin yan? Pwede. Kasi yung isa yung kasi. No, it doesn't matter. The important is the message. Amen? Praise God. If any one of you here sitting at your chair right now, at that yung meron mo nagkikita na, parang, gusto ko ito sa church, ha? Okay? Go for it. Go for it. Amen. Amen? If you have that peace, and the Lord is always, hindi na wawala yan sa heart ko. One thing na ang, ang sign ko lang yung sa Panginoon, pag hindi na wala sa heart ko, and I have that peace, and really, hindi ako pinapagulog yung Lord, gagawin ko yan. Why? That is the thing na gusto niyang ipagawa sa buhay mo. May say amen. Now, here, makita natin si Peter. We can learn a lot from watching Peter in his life. Peter has walked with Jesus. <laughs> He has seen Jesus' miracles. He heard the teachings. And si Peter, ang kind of personality, is a type of zealous person. A spokesman of the group. Lagi niya nang tumatayo. Lagi niya nang, yung, uh, kumbaga siya yung bagkero. <laughs> zealous siya eh. He, he is always the first one to stand up in the group. Kaya nga siya yung unang bumulot ng <laughs> sword para takyasin niya yung tenga ng soldier. And can say anything. He can always say anything. Why? He is bold. Yun ang personality niya eh. Okay? Ngayon, kung kaya hindi ka Peter, hindi ka bold, wala nang pakiang siya si Jesus. No, hindi. Kahit shy type ka, gagamitin ka pang dinor. Amen? Sabi mo sa tabi mo, kahit shy type ka. Kahit shy type ka. Why? <laughs> Mer- Merong ibang work power sa'yo. Amen? And Peter here, yun ang gifting niya. No? Tumayo, maging bold. But the problem with Peter, At this time, he is trusting in himself. <laughs> so sometimes, ganun tayo eh. Wow, I have, oh, I have this gifting. I have this boldness in the ministry. So, I am trusting. Just like Peter, he is trusting in himself. He is trusting in his strength and ability to serve Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Kaya nga, ang tindi nito, it will represent all the believers in the house. Especially if you are workers. If you are leaders, pastors. Sometimes yun ang boldness natin, yung, yung kakayahan natin eh. Remember, tama is not enough. I want to tell you this. Attitude. It's one thing. Just like Jesus, He humbled down. Amen. Amen. He's not trusting in His own capacity. Lord, He is Lord. He has a divine nature. But He still communicates with His Heavenly Father. To receive more from Him, to listen more from Him. And once he receives more from him, he will overflow, he will do the very thing that the Father wants him to do. Now let us speak the story. Jesus was about to the cross now. Paluho siya ipapos sa cross. He had a conversation sa mga disciples. And look what happened in Mark 14.29. Okay. Mark 14.29. Peter said to him, Peter said to Jesus, <laughs> because he is bold, ano sabi niya? Spokesman siya ng grupo? Even if all are made to stumble, yet I will not be. Hmm. Ganun siya ka-bold. 
Even if all our weight is tumbled, Lord, ako, over my dead body, and sabi ni Peter. <laughs> Verse 4, 29. But Jesus said, Verse 30, Jesus said to him, He was a Jesus. There was a conversation. Believer na to eh. Okay? Assuredly, I say to you, Peter, that today, even this night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. You will deny me three times. So that so bold, Peter, with all his boldness, and Jesus, what will happen next? Amen. Ang nakita natin dyan, verse 31. But he spoke more vehemently. Bigyan mo nga na ibang version. Hindi ko alam yung vehemently. He insisted to the audio. Ang pathetically. Sabi niya, Even if I have to die with you. Bigyan mo, kung gano'n siya kabol. Sabi na nga ni Jesus, hindi dinay mo ako. Hindi! Sabi ni Peter. Even I have to die with you, I will never disown you. Ganun tayo minsan eh. Ah Lord, maki pagpatayan ko kayo ka. Over my dead body, pagbili ko daw sa'yo. Oh, you are just trusting on your own strength. Kaya nga, masalap sa biyaya, hindi ka nagkikiwala sa sarili mo. Every time nagmatay ako, nanginig ang tuhod ko. Pero, I love the grace of God. Amen. And all the others, may nga patuki na rin haluha. Oh, sige, dyan naman leader namin si Peter. Okay! I will go with you, Peter. All the others said the same. Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. Ito niya yan. Kapag sumangan nga ako sa Panginoon eh. Lord, ako lang bahala sa ganito ha. Oh Lord, magkukumit ako sa iyo ngayon ha. May naman, ako lang naman. Right? So, nakikita natin. Pero sabi ko nga ako sa inyo, ang grace ni Lord ay sapat sa bawat isa sa atin. Jesus here is not intimidated with Peter's inability. Okay? By his mouth to deny him. Okay? Verse 71. That particular verse. Verse 14, 71. Ito pa. Nagsuwer pa siya. A curse on me if I am lying. <laughs> I don't know this man you're talking about. Have you gone? Pagdating na na-encounter niya yung young, young girl. Okay? Nakita mo nga, no? After he committed with all, with all his boldness, ito ang makita mo, ito, ito ang scenario makita ninyo, ha? Sino na-encounter ni Peter? Young servant girl. Amen? Can you imagine young servant girl being intimidating? Ano oh, gawang kilalang si Jesus? Amen? It is like a kind of the Lord's saying, if you trust in yourself, even the weakest person coming to you, Peter, you cannot stand up. Kapag ikaw nagtitiwala sa sarili mong kakayahan, kahit na yung, yung, yung batang servant ma-intimidate ka, hindi mo kaya tayuin yung tinatayuan mo. A young servant asked Peter and denied Jesus three times. Tama ko ba? And that is a picture of, for us when we trust in our own ability. Can you imagine the shame that Peter has? Can you imagine that condemnation na meron siya? The things are running on his Peter's head. Grabe, kinain ko si Jesus. Kinain ko rin yung sinabi ko. Amen? He might think that he missed his only chance na pwede kong ipagdanggol. You know what? That's your defining moment with God. Kapag minsan, o go ko na dyan, meron kang share with Jesus, hindi mo, did you know, nahihiya ka, baka mapahiya, baka uh, ma-off sila sa'yo dahil may Jesus ka. Sometimes ganun ka eh. Sometimes ganun tayo. Tama? Dapat may, ang bonus natin ngayon, just wish Jesus. Amen. Just share Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, alam natin, in John 21.15, John 
I'll serve Jesus today and the rest of the Yung time na ginugol niya kay Peter para i-disciple niya, at ngayon si Peter ngayon, because of his condemnation, na dininay niya si Jesus, Jesus here, nire-reinstate niya ngayon si Peter. Amen? Ganun si Jesus. Minsan, gumalabas tayo sa kudel niya, nakukondem tayo kasi hindi natin nagawa yung part natin, si Jesus, pupuntahan niya ngayon. Yes, amen? Amen. Because grace of God is individual thing. Kaya nga, huwag mong, huwag mong tignan yung tao na palabagang na-accuse mo siya. Tignan mo nga siya, no? Bahala mo kung sino pa born again, born again dyan. Mag-commit-commit pa dyan. It's, it's not for you. <laughs> to say something against that tao. Hayaan mong biyahin ni Lord ang makagawa sa kanya. Amen. Amen? So Jesus here, pursue Peter. After the breakfast, pagkita mo, maraming disciples yan. Pero makita mo, si Jesus ang puti niya si Simon Peter. Because grace is an individual thing. Okay? Yung para sa kapatabi mo, iba yung gagawin ni Lord. Yung para sa iyo, iba rin. Amen. According to the needs na meron ka. Why? Ang, 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 si Peter, babalik na lang ako eh, sa pag-iisla. Pero ang sinabi niya ni Jesus, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lungs. Ang sabi ni Jesus, bakit? Nire-reinstate na niya si Peter. Kung anong ginawa ko sa iyo, yung dapat ng original plan ko sa iyo, gagawin pa rin natin ito, kasama kita. Amen. Hindi ka matatakot. Amen. Amen. Dahil ako ang kasama mo. Hindi ka na, hindi ka na kayo malagari sa sarili mong pagayahan. Magtitiwala ka na sa akin ngayon kasi ako ang gagawa sa iyo. Amen. 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 Verse 16. He said to him again, ulit-ulit na sinasabi, tinatanong, para lang ma-confirm sa'yo. Na, na, sabi niya, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Bakit? Kapag love mo ako, reflection lang na tinanggap mo ako. Amen. When you receive the love of the Father, you will love Him back. And the result is, papayag ka niya, ma-reinstate ka niya. Why? Because it's not all about you, it's all about Him. Amen. So Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He said to him, tell my sheep. So we are uh, the, uh, we are believers na pinagkatiwalaan tayo ng mga sheep ng Panginoon. Amen. Okay, another thing. Verse 17. He said to him, the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter was grieved. <laughs> Ang kulipo na Lord. Amen. Tanong na lang tanong. Pagkano na yan ah. Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen. Jesus wants you to know you can not do anything to separate yourself from His love. hindi ka niya, hihiwala yan. Kasi ang pinaka punot dulo na lahat ay yung pag-ibig ko sa'yo. Mahal kita eh. Amen? Mahal kita. Ang gabi mo, kung tinanggap mo ang love ko, tinanggap mo ang grace ko, then let's pour things out sa buhay mo. I'm gonna pour out, I will pour out on you that you don't have enough room to contain it. After the revelation of Jesus Christ, after the revelation of Peter to Jesus Christ that He was a resurrected Jesus, makita mo sa lahat ng books po ni Peter, makita niyo po doon na kung paano si Peter po na wala kanyang condemnation, na wala sa kanya yung pinatawag na shame the past, at nagpasimula siya mag-overflow. Because Peter, ang nangyayari dito, nire niya si Peter and what happened to Peter the same mouth na dininight niya ng three times the same mouth din na nagpronounce ng curse but the same mouth ang ginamit ni Jesus to first preach the gospel amen and save 3,000 people 
Praise God for His grace. Amen. Amen. I will, I will, I will, Peter, gusto niya gamitin si Peter? Dahil bakit? Na-incredible na niya ang grace. Alam niyo po ba, ang sarap ng mga tao na magbibigod sa Panginoon na nakaranas ng bibiyaya? Amen? Bakit? Wala nang pag-uusapan doon kung yung biyaya ni Lord kaya ang nagagawa yung ministry mo. Praise God! Every one of us here. Amen. Pwede natin niyang uh, tanggapin ang biyaya ni Lord na ano man ang nakaraan mo regardless of your past. Regardless of your decisions in the past, hindi mo nagawa. Don't worry with that. Because this is here. It's for you. Na, yung original plan, para, niya, para gawin niya, para ma-expand ang kingdom niya, ay gagamitin ko pa rin niya ang buhay mo. Amin po ba? So, are you worried about your past? No. And, gusto mo i-dagdag yung case number four. So here, meron tayong Samaritan, ang believer. Meron tayong Zacchaeus, ang believer na naging believer. Meron tayong ngayon na believer na na nag-commit. Tapos nirisky ni Jesus. And now, we have Saul of Tarsus who became Paul. These people whom I put here are these people who encountered grace. Amen. So I hope, uh, is this helping you? Are you receiving from the Lord? Amen. Praise God. We know, we know, uh, we know the case of uh, Paul. And before that, his name is Saul of Tarsus. Amen. And Acts 9.1, Acts 9.1. Saul still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. Who is, who is Paul here? A murderer. Siya yung persecute ng church to Jesus. Amen? So, yun yung case si Peter naman. People, because Paul here has a perfect pedigree as a perfect performance, you know, wala siyang position ngayon sa Panginoon. So, he is boasting of something na kung ano yung language niya. A Hebrew of Hebrew. Right? From the Benjamin tribe. Amen? And, pinipersipin niya yung mga yung mga believers. Why? Because of his self-righteousness. Knowing all, he's a Pharisee of Pharisee. Alam niya lahat yung patungkol sa uh, righteousness when it comes to the law. That's why, eh, ngayon, nasa biyaya yung mga tao. He put threats among them, all the disciples, uh, all the believers. So here, makita natin dito, uh, He encountered God on the road of Tarsus. Amen? Verse 10. Pastor Shield preach this one time. Okay? Now there was a certain disciple. Ginamit, ginamit ni Jesus, ni God, yung isang disciple, maniniwala kay Jesus. Ang pangalan niya si Ananias. Okay? And to him, the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. Verse 11. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. So here, gumamit si Lord na another disciple to meet, to meet Paul, to meet Saul of Tarsus, para ma-imprento niya ang biyaya ni Lord. <coughs> Amen? And I, I just want to 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 say that Ananias no, as katulad po ng share po, sharing po ni Pastor Sheila uh, God sent him to Paul 
to pray for him. And the Bible tells us Paul received his sight immediately. Tama po ba? He was filled with the Holy Spirit. The same Ananias na makita natin dito, the Hebrew name is Hananiah. Am I right? Hananiah. 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 Means grace of Yah. Grace of Yahweh. Alright? So, <laughs> makita mo dito yung encuentro ni Paul to one disciple named Ananias na ang ibig sabihin ng kanyang pangalan is Grace of Yahweh. At siya ho ang nag-pray para kay Saul of Tarsus. And immediately, hindi na yung magigal, ha? Mercy God, ba? Immediately, magigal natin dito, And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias. Yeah, okay. And then, makita natin, dito mo na lang, Brother Mark siya pa, yung nagkaroon siya ng sight, nakareceive siya ng sight, because na-imprento niya si Jesus. Amen? So, makita natin dito, kung i-squeeze po natin yung story ko ni Saul, he's a self-righteous people. There are people sometimes na self-righteous sila. There are people who, who, na listen, uh, they are boasting of something that they have because of their performance base. Now here, matita mo dito, ang paraan ng Panginoon para i-restore pa rin niya ang mga ganun na tao ay sa pamamagitan pa rin ng kanyang biyaya. Amen. Amen. Well, sometimes, people will, will accuse you of something because of, hey, kami, kami, kami. Holier than them. And you, you know what? If, if according to the flesh, you keep on having this argument with them, wala man na For me, my, uh, our position with Pastora, we will allow the grace of God to work. Yes. After that, only then and only then, you can have your sweet communications on the Lord. So going back to Paul, immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales and he received his sight at once. And he arose and was baptized. He became a believer. That's why in Philippians 3, verse 1 to 10, here, um, what happened to Paul? The famous grace preacher, siya ho ang nagsulat ng two-thirds of the New Testament. Na dati natin, he keeps on persecuting the church, but now he is ready for something big. He wrote the two-thirds of the New Testaments proclaiming the grace of God. Because he encountered grace himself. And sabi niya dyan, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. If before I am persecuting the church, now, I am here to represent the grace himself. Verse 2. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Because if you have confidence in the flesh, you are working by your own thing, your own works. Sabi niya, binalikan niya sa kanya. Ako nga eh, though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I'm more so. Ako yun! Sa tingin mo, ikaw ang righteous, ako yun! Ano sabi niya? The following verse, Circumcise the eighth day as per requirement of Abrahamic covenant. Of the staff of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, based on my pedigree, I am qualified. A Hebrew of the Hebrews, huh. concerning the law, a Pharisee. Ako yun. Perfect ko yan. 
concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness, which is the law, based on my performance, blameless ako. Ako yun. Alright? Verse 7. But what these were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Because I am allowing His grace now. It doesn't matter if I have all of this. What matters most? I have Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 8. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the essence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Ipagpapalit ko lahat ng mga bagay-bagay na yan. Because I want to know more Jesus Christ. Amen? My Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. Amen. Amen? Going back to Jesus, everything is all about gain. Verse 10. Verse 9. And be found, okay, verse 9. And by, and be found in Him. Makita mo, okay, ang bawat dapat believers ay lagi na kay Cristo that having my own righteousness it's not all about me, Lord Jesus. It's not all about my performances. It's not about how I, how loud I pray. It's not all about how long I pray. It's all about you. The reason why I can have a long prayer because I am enjoying communication with you. Amen. Which is far from the law. But that which is true faith in Christ. The righteousness which is from God by faith. It's all about your faith. Believing that your righteousness magugwa mo lang yan sa pamagitan ng ginawa ni Jesus. Verse 10. Found in Him, I said, Amen. My position now is in Christ. is far better than those I had before. And now that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. If you have the revelation of who Jesus is, resurrected from the dead, yeah. Amen. You can now invade the impossible. Why? Because if Jesus remained at the tomb, there's nothing na pag-usapan natin dito. But because Jesus Christ resurrected, you as believers have a resurrected life also. Praise God. And the fellowship of His suffering is being confirmed to His death. Okay? So praise God. Did you see the overflow of Paul here? That's why grabe po ang ginawa ng Diyos sa Kanya. So lahat po tayo nire-represent ng apat na cases na yun. But gusto ko pong gusto ko pong bigyan pa ko kayo ng isa. Praise God. Uh, hindi ko na isama pero I was recalled by this thing. Thank you Lord. Sabi mo nga sa tabi mo be an overflow. Be an overflow. Be an overflow. John 21, 24, 25. We know John, the beloved John, siya nga siya beloved John. Lahat naman beloved tayo. Pero dahil minalitate niya kung gaano kabuti ang Diyos, kung ano ka, gaano ka sa yung pag-ibig niya. Kaya nga, nung sinulat niya, ang book ng John, siya yung beloved. He is personified pinipersonal niya, o pinipersonalize niya yung pag-ibig ng Diyos. Kaya nga, sabi niya dito, this is the disciple who testifies of these things and wrote these things and we know that this testimony is true. Okay? Verse 25. There are also many other things that Jesus did which if they were written one by one oh hallelujah hallelujah i suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written hallelujah hallelujah amen when people is receiving jesus when they encounter jesus you know you have your own story you have your testimony 
Praise God forevermore. Amen. Ang dami-dami pwedeng ginawa. Those are just some. Amen. Different cases 